Welcome to the News Review. 22 aid groups in Yemen have called on the new U.S. administration to immediately rescind the blacklisting of the Ansar Allah movement. They've warned that the move puts millions of lives at risk. The groups, including Oxfam, said the terrorist designation disrupts life-saving aid operations and commercial imports of essential goods. They said although the UN and some aid agencies have been exempted from U.S. sanctions, sufficient guarantees have not been offered to international banks, shipping companies and suppliers. As a result, the aid groups warned many in the commercial sector would likely avoid continuing work in Yemen. The U.S. State Department has launched a review of the designation. It came into effect a day before President Joe Biden took office on January the 20. And joining us is Ken Stone from the Hamilton Coalition to Stop the War from Hamilton. And we also have Faras Najim, manager at the Canadian Defenders for Human Rights. Gentlemen, welcome. Ken, the, are you optimistic that the Biden White House will acknowledge that the Trump White House imposed a death sentence on Yemen? Put it this way, I'm hopeful that the um, Biden White House will uh, remove that terrorist designation that they have put on the Ansrallah movement, who are the people on the ground in Yemen who are fighting a war of resistance against U.S. Saudi aggression. They are not terrorists. And I'd like your viewers to know that tomorrow is the first ever global day of action to end the war on Yemen. And actions will take place around the world People who want to know more about it can go to the Hamilton Coalition to Stop the War website or our Facebook page for more information. And if uh, people are in England, they can go to Stop the War UK, uh, the coalition, Stop the War Coalition UK, and in the United States to Code Pink. There will be a global webinar for everyone in the world who wants to attend, and it will feature Jeremy Corbyn, for example. Great stuff, Ken. Thank you very much indeed for that. For us, having seen everything that we've seen in Yemen, perhaps it was right to designate a party to this conflict as a terrorist organization, a terrorist group. But it sh sh should it not have been the other party, not the ones resisting the aggressors who are killing South, uh, Yemeni school children on a school bus on their way to school, 40 or 50 of them, should they not have been the ones that have been designated as a terrorist group? Yes. Uh, I, best regards to Press TV staff and all viewers. Um, you know, it's uh, it's very clear that uh, the uh, resistance in Yemen is making a big change. Uh, it is breaking the siege. It's breaking the arrogant powers. As we see, the biggest colonizers in the history, Canada, uh, um, that is Britain, USA, and France, they're all the ones that are dealing with all this logistical work, you know, and they're the ones giving all the instructions to the Saudi coalition that uh, have no really military experience or, you know, uh, understanding of the whole geographical area. But uh, they're losing the battle. And this is the reason why they put them in the terrorist list. What, what, what terrorist activities have they done? What terrorist, uh, you know, uh, attacks have they done? There's nothing like that. They're sitting in their own country. They're defending their own people. They are trying to keep their so country uh, sovereign. Once the Saudis came in and uh, started to take over certain areas, uh, you know, in, in Aden and different areas, and they started to uh, buy out some mercenaries there and tr to fight their battle that the Americans appointed them for, probably, obviously. Um, we've seen that all of a sudden Daesh, ISIS came out. All of a sudden we see that Al-Qaeda started getting stronger. Why is this, right? This wasn't, there was no Daesh and ISIS before this uh, whole war that started in March 26, 2015. So this is clearly showing us the real terrorist is the Saudi coalition and their Wahhabi, Takfiri, um, you know, uh, doctrine that they try to impose and push everywhere. You know, and I have no hope in, in Biden because... You know, Biden is similar to Obama. When he was in power, what did Obama do? He started a, a brand new war, and that's Yemen. He started the Syrian war. He started the Libyan war. You know, he just does it in a more 
um, softer way and a more discreet way and, and so on, you know, compared to Trump. Trump is very, you know, uh, up there and he's arrogant and he just clearly says what he wants to kind of do, you know what I mean? He's a he's a clear criminal. <laughs> you know, this guy is a little bit more concealed and works right. in a different manner. So I, I don't expect uh, them to uh, do anything well, I, you know, yeah. unfortunately. Najee, again, well, for us, you know, the, uh, the Yemenis, they did do something. They uh, hit Aramco facilities oil in retaliation. And oil, as you know, is more important. That disrupted the price of oil. Oil is more mm. important than Ye Yemeni children. Ken, the, uh, the, for us, raises a very important point here. The whole war started under the U.S. administration, under the uh, Obama administration. In fact, I, as I recall, the uh, Saudi foreign minister announced, declared the war on Yemen from Washington, D.C., the former Saudi foreign minister. So it doesn't appear that... I don't, I don't, you tell us, do you think that the, the U.S. will continue supporting Saudi Arabia in this war? Well, Biden made a campaign promise and uh, he, that he would stop U.S. support for the Saudi war on uh, Yemen. Now, we know about campaign promises here in Canada because uh, our prime minister disgraced himself in, the, in 2015 in running for election. He promised to end the largest arms deal in Canadian history, which was for $15 billion worth of light armored vehicles made just a few kilometers from where I'm sitting to be sent to Saudi Arabia, uh, which have been used against Saudi Arabians themselves who are uh, dissenting against the government and also in Yemen. So he, he, when he got into power, he signed the deal and he signed even more deals uh, with the Saudis to, uh, uh, for arms to be used against the Yemeni people. So um, Trudeau did not keep his promise. And I realized that uh, that President Biden was vice president under Obama when this war started. However, things change. And as I said earlier, I'm I'm a bit skeptical, but I'm hopeful that uh, Biden will live up to this campaign promise because it could make a, it could make a big difference for the Yemeni people who have suffered. 233,000 deaths, according to the last count I saw. And according to UNICEF, one Yemeni child dies on the average every 10 minutes due to this war because of hunger and disease. So it would make a difference if Biden lived up to his campaign promise on Yemen. Yep, but those, those figures are disturbing the very, um, uh, the, the figures you, you say they're very lengthy and they're very disturbing and you know you just can't go through them all we'll, we'll be here until the the middle of next week uh, for us just going back when if this saudi war on yemen with the backing of the west the west may get away with it but saudi arabia should it not be put behind an international tribunal for what is done in yemen it's devastated the country's crippled that there's nothing left uh I mean, it's uh, it's obviously very disgraceful that uh, you know in the Human Rights uh, Commission in the, in the, in the United Nations uh, that Saudi Arabia has a seat there, okay, and they're the ones that commit the most human rights abuses in the world, like one of the most countries that does that, especially in the Middle East. You know, it's a tyrannical tribal regime. Um, you know, they 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 don't care about human rights. They don't care. They don't have no human rights organizations working inside inside their system. Anybody that speaks out and addresses any of these human rights abuses, they're right ahead arrested, put in prison, and locked up uh, without seeing any kind of light. So pretty much we remember at a time where Ban Kumin, uh, the Secretary General at that time, where uh, he labeled Saudi Arabia as the child killers. And uh, he endfully said that he had to, he actually said it live on TV, said that he had to pull their name out of this list because he was blackmailed by the Saudis, that they would... Uh, you know, uh, in return, they would respond by taking out a big lump sum of amount of money that they donate every year to a certain section yeah. of UNICEF, as I remember, to fair certain play, uh, people. Fair play for having the courage to say that. Yeah, he, because he couldn't take it anymore and he was put under serious pressure. So he said it was my, ch I had two choices. Either I would have to lose this money that goes out to, to, to certain people that need help or I, you know, I would have to pull the name out. So he pulled the name out and he pulled it out. And it was clear these guys, they kill, okay, MSF. So these Doctors Without Borders, 
you know, they set up their, 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 their hospitals to help people that are wounded and so on in time of war zone. Their places are also uh, monitored and they're also GPS monitored and nobody's allowed to hit these places. Saudis hit them and MSF had to leave. And they said that we've, uh, the, the president at the time said, I've been to many conflict zones, including Syria. I've never seen nothing like Yemen. And that was uh, with have, U.S. intelligence uh, for us as well. U.S. intelligence support to... They bombed the MSF. They I'm bombed the MSF. They, they bombed also... Um, Yes. Too many places. I'm afraid I'm going to have to end. I know the list is too long, the, the amount of places, the wedding parties, the funerals. It's amazing how the, the West cozies up to these dictatorships. Yep. Hypocrisy on the highest level, like, you know, and we need to face and we have to expose this. And I mean, like, uh, we're, we're also having a, a global protest tomorrow in the world. This is good. This is a new uh, change. It's March 25th, uh, January 25th. Um, and there's going to be many organizations there. And also we're going to be calling for the lifting of the siege on the uh, Sana'a airport that's, you know, been on, on blockade, you know, which, how can people survive without having an airport even operational? I, yep. You know, it's unbelievable. Absolutely. Ken, what was your website the web to go to? Hamilton Coalition to Stop the War dot CA. Okay. And for us, do you want to plug anything? Yeah, I just uh, want to say that uh, we want humanity no, to wake plug, up. We want people want to, plug to stand any, up. Any websites for the demonstrations happening tomorrow? Where should people go uh, to look out for? I mean, with the Hamilton Coalition is pretty much taking care of that and okay. some other Great. Uh, Good stuff. Yeah, organizations. We're yeah. going to have to end it there, gentlemen. Thank you very much indeed. Let me thank our guest, Ken Stone, from the Hamilton Coalition to Stop the War. And Firas and Najim, the manager at the Canadian Defenders for Human Rights. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for your contribution. And dear viewers, thank you for staying tuned to this edition of the News Review.